Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope you're all doing well. I know that I am. And today, we're going to start on Upper Kaelid. We're also going to be finishing up some NPC side quests, which I want to talk about real quick. With Blythe and EG, I forgot to talk to them both before I finished up Ronnie's quest, and I missed some dialogue with them. EG locks Blythe in an Everjail, and then you have to get him out. Now, it doesn't break either one of their side quests, but I just wanted to let everybody know I did forget about that, and I am very, very sorry. Also, one more thing. I did change out my armor. All I did was change from the Banished Knight set over to the Crucible Knight set, and that's it. All right, now that that's all been said, let's go ahead and go into our map. We're gonna zoom out. We're gonna come up to Ronnie's Rise, but before we go over to Ronnie's Rise, we're gonna put a few markers down. We're gonna put one right here, and then we're gonna put one right there. Let's go ahead and go over to Ronnie's Rise. We're going to be fighting Blythe here in a minute. No. I'm part of her very being. I can never betray her. No matter what might happen. Ronnie. She needs me. I'm sorry to do this to you, bud. I don't know if anybody's played Dark Souls 1 or not, but Blythe very much reminds me of Artorius from Dark Souls 1. Just his moveset and his style. Heal ourselves real quick. Ooh. So for killing Blythe, we get the Royal Great Sword. Really cool sword. If you're not feeling the Bloodhound's Fang, try this one out. We also get Blythe's armor. Let's go ahead and hop on Torrent. We're going to ride south here. Well, not really south. It's east, but we're riding down the hill is what I meant. Then we're going to veer off over here. We can get his bell bearing along with his attire as well. And as you can see, Pitya's puppets killed him. We can get Pitya's bell bearing along with Dolores 
the sleeping arrow puppet. Let's go ahead and go south here. We're going to go talk to EG. Put on our lamp real fast. Oh, there you are. Good of you to drop by. Have you heard? Lady Rani has departed on her journey along the dark path of Empyrean from Rena's rise, as she calls it. It would not have been possible without you. As Lady Rani's war counselor and moreover, her childhood warden, I express my deepest gratitude. You and only you were Lady Rani's true champion. Unthinkable. How could Blythe? How did he break free from his cell? No. More importantly, Blythe became a curse that plagued Lady Rani. Yet even in madness, gave himself to her. I've made a grave misjudgment. And I thought myself a capable war counselor. I'll catch up with you soon enough, Blythe. When I do, I only hope you'll accept my apology. Let's go ahead and sit at this grace. Poor EG's gonna die too. So, EG is, I guess, burning with a black flame? Like, I guess that's what that is. We can pick up EG's bell bearing along with EG's mirror helm. Let's go over to Kaelid, but before we actually start working on Kaelid, let's put down a few markers. Our first marker is going to be over here. Our second marker is going to be about right here. Our third marker is going to be about right here. Fourth one's going to be over here. And then our fifth one will be about... This is the hardest one to get right because it's in such a weird location. Yeah, right there. Now let's go over here and we're going to go to the Bestial Sanctum. I'll see everybody over there. We're going to put our shield on, two-hand our sword. Go ahead and summon in our Mimic Tear. Drink our yummy, wondrous flask of physic. And then we're going to take this gargoyle on. You don't have to do this. This gargoyle is a straight asshole. Oof. Yeah, he just kind of goes everywhere. And he hits hard. He hits really hard. Awesome. My mimic tear took him down. So for killing that gargoyle, we get the gargoyle's black blade along with the gargoyle's black halberd. We're going to hop on torrent and then we're going to head southwest and around the bestial sanctum here. Once you get to this set of rocks right here, we're going to look down, and there should be a tree branch we can hop down to. 
I'm going to hop down right here. This is a very tricky spot. Not the first spot to drop off of. But once we get down here, it gets a little sketchy. And then we're going to drop over here on the top of this tower. And then right here. Now, you can also use soft cotton to help you in this area. I'm not going to bother with it. We're going to hop on Torrent. We're going to jump across. And then over here, we're going to jump and land right there. It's very important that you land on these rocks. I believe you'll die. I haven't tried it yet, but I believe you'll die if you land right here. So just keep that in mind. This is the hardest part of getting down. You want to hop over here and just keep using these little outcroppings to get yourself over to this area and then slide down the side of the wall. If you don't do that, you're just going to die over and over and over again. But luckily, there's a grace close by. Now we're going to run over here. We're going to grab the Sinkata, I think it's called. It's a dagger. There's nothing real special about it. Just a dagger that looks unique. At least I didn't find anything special about that dagger. And then right here we get the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman. Let's go ahead and fast travel back to the Bestial Sanctum. Now we're going to start making our way towards these markers. First marker is going to be down here. First marker is going to be down here by an Ur tree sapling. Be careful of the vulgar men militia or the vulgar militiamen. I think that's what they're called. Grab this Starlight Shard. And then we're going to head southwest. Hop down right here. And then right here is going to be a grace. We're going to light it. Doesn't look like anything's coming for us. So there's a dragon over there. We're not going to take care of that just yet. We're actually going to say that, save that for another video. We're going to come over here to the third marker. Right behind these stone outcroppings is a silver scarab. It's going to give us a somber smithing stone nine. Now we're going to head northeast past the grace that we just lit up here. And just follow this around. This is going to bring us over by one of those wizard towers or sorcerer's towers. I'm not sure what they are. I know they're towers. Be really careful. I like to hug the cliffside here just because there's a lot of those poison seeds that if you run over them, it'll spew out poison at you. You kind of see them all in the road over there. Let's 
go ahead and light this grace. Now, before we go any further, I want to show everybody a ruin farm. There's a lot of times that I use this if I'm trying to get items and stuff. You want to run down here. And then right about here, a ball is going to spawn. You want to dodge it and then look at it. You have to look at it in the direction that it falls. And you'll get about 19, well, yeah, 1900 runes for watching it fall. And then all you have to do is come right back up here. Rest at the grace. And then if you want more runes for every time you do this, you can put on the gold scarab, which is what I usually use to farm up ruins anyways. Even if I'm helping somebody, I'll put that on to maximize my ruin gain. And then you can come over here and then look at the ball fall and then we get 2300. So not a crazy amount more than just without it, but enough to want the golden scarab on. Let's put Radagon's scar seal back on. And then we're going to use this spirit spring to jump on top of the roof over here. So we want to jump up and we're going to aim for the top of the roof, hop off torrent, and then you can kind of see a ledge. We want to fall down here. We want to go up first for a memory stone. Step on the elevator. Get ourselves a memory stone. And then we're going to ride the elevator back down. And then at the bottom here is an enemy, but I don't know what it does for killing it. I guess you just kill it for funsies it spews out this blue mist you don't want it to hit you it actually hurts quite a bit so to spew that out and then once it goes down then you can hit it again there we go yeah I, I don't know like, what's the point of killing that guy? So if you don't want to kill it, don't bother. We're going to hop on Torrent. We're actually going to use this Spirit Spring again. We're going to hop up here. Couple coffins that we can loot. Okay, that's all of them. And then we want to ride down this pathway. And then off to the right, there should be a gold scarab. So we get bestial concentration or not concentration, constitution. Jeez, I'm telling you, words. We're gonna come down here to the southwest. We're gonna have an Ur tree avatar to fight. It's not too hard. It's a little more difficult than the one in the last video, but nothing too crazy. And then I'm going to buff my weapon just for a second here.
it does this slam on the ground and it's gonna spew out a bunch of scarlet rot so be careful for that scarlet rot's not fun to deal with we all know that And there we go. Killed the Urtree Avatar. So for killing the Urtree Avatar, we're going to be getting two more tiers. The first one's going to be the Opaline Hard Tier, which is going to boost all your resistance if you put that on. And then the Stone Barbed Crack Tier. Which I don't remember what that does. Now, we're going to follow the path down here and we're going to light a Grace guess I'll put a marker down right here but we're gonna backtrack after light and the grace just because we can die very very easily where we're about to go going down the bestial sanctum is easy compared to the part we're about to traverse there's no easy way of getting down there let's light this grace we can sit at it too so that we can just regain everything. Just turn around and head east. Don't worry about that um, spirit spring. Right here by this big jar, we're going to fall down. We will take fall damage on this. So if you don't want to take fall damage, just use the soft cotton. It's not a lot. And then right here, we're going to fall off again. We're going to jump past this branch. The spot is just so scary. It's nerve wracking. And then right here, we're going to get a running jump and get across. Whew. Almost fell off. This is the hardest part is running across and getting on here. You can use torrent, but I swear I fall every single time I use torrent to get on this pillar. Okay, so we want to face right over here. And all I do is jump once. Jump once, and I'll land perfectly on this branch. And then we can fall off once we get to this branch. Get ourselves the Ash of War Reign of Arrows. Such a badass Ash of War. Put it on if you just want to rain arrows down on your enemies. Okay, so right here is one of those iron golems you do not have to fight this you don't get anything special every now and then he'll drop his halberd but the only thing he has by him is a um crap what is it called it, it's nothing special I'll, I'll show you soon as we kill him but if, if you don't want to fight this guy super beefy like hits like a truck. It, it's just, it's not worth fighting him. Can we make it? Can we make it? Oh, we just made it. Just keep doing charge attacks on this guy. Oh, of course you'd be right here. Okay. Awesome. There we go. We killed him. And we didn't get anything for it. Rune Arc. That's what it was. <laughs> Good lordy. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. Let's go ahead and fast travel back over to this grace that we lit just a little while ago.
Okay, we're going to head east. Instead of going up, we're going to take the path below here. We're going to go inside this cave. This cave has a rune bear in it. We are not going to fight that thing. That's a whole lot of nope. Because this rune bear hits hard. It's very, very hard. If you don't want to even worry about him, you can come over here and go straight over to the boss. But I need to make sure I get a talisman. We're going to run by him. Just keep running. Keep running. There you go. Get the bull goat's talisman. He's pretty angry with us right now. Let's see if he'll continue forward. Then we can run right by him. So we came from the right. We want to go to the left. Just keep running. Don't stop. There we go. We got right by him. Perfect. Now we just have to deal with a few wolves, which are chumps compared to that rune bear. Got a golden rune eight. Then we want to drop down here. Let's put our, actually let's take our beast torch off. We don't need that anymore. We want to put our shield on because we're going to be fighting a boss. Two bosses, in matter of fact, not just one. They're pretty easy. They're not hard. They're just beastmen. We fought them before. At least one of them. For a boss fight and that was way at the beginning of the game and then they're done and we get the flame drake talisman plus two for killing them let's go ahead and fast travel back to the dragon burrow fork we're gonna go into our map we're going to put a marker right about here, and then we're going to put a marker over here. Hop on Torrent. This time we're going to be going southwest to west. Be very careful. There are a ton of dragons over here. I wouldn't fight them. They're not extremely hard or anything. But they don't drop any dragon hearts, so not really worth a fight. Right here, we're going to activate this summoning pool. Immediately hop back on Torrent. Because we do have a dragon chasing us. And then we're going to head south towards the first marker. which is going to be on top of this ginormous skull.
get a lot of upgrade material. Get rid of that marker and then we can start making our way down. Over here we got a sleeping dragon and we also have a really big dragon but it's not really a threat. We're gonna light this grace. And then we're gonna sit at this grace. Just to de aggro everything. And then over here, we're gonna be killing this dragon. But I'm gonna cut a lot of this out because it just takes a stupid amount of time to kill this thing. So let's buff our weapon. Bleed is the best way to kill this dragon. But as you can tell, looking at her health, she just doesn't want to die. But we get a big chunk that comes off because of our bleed. So I'll see everybody in just a second after I'm done killing this dragon. Okay, finally, finally we killed her. Ugh, I swear it's like 10 minutes it took me to kill this dragon. I did go ahead and put on the golden scarab as well, but for killing her, we get five dragon hearts and a new draconic power. Let's go ahead and take off the gold scarab. We're going to put Radagon scar seal back on, which we're actually about to get a better Radagon seal. We just want to rest right here so we could get rid of the debuff that she gave us. Put on our shield again. We're going to drink our flask. Summon in our mimic tier. Heal ourselves. And then get ready to kill a bunch of bats. Now normally I would not care about bats. But there are a couple of the female bats that give us uh, Golden Ruin 9s. I mean, they're bats, so they're not that difficult. Plus, you do have a summon you can use to help you out. Over here, this chest is super important. We're going to get the Dectus Medallion right. Now we have the full medallion. We can use it to use a lift later on into the game. Careful. Got some invisible guys here. You don't have to worry about them too much unless you want to go around and kill them all. I'm not about that life. Get a golden ruin 12. Big Rat was messing me up. Go ahead and get Radagon Sore Seal. I love this talisman. The only problem with these uh, seals are that you do take more damage, but you also get a really big buff to Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dexterity. We're going to get out of here and then afterwards we're going to go ahead and end the video.
And then just to make sure nothing's aggroed towards us, we're going to reset this grace one more time. Okay, we're going to come right here. Maybe a little bit further back. And then this is where we're going to end the video. I want to start by telling everybody thank you so very much for stopping by and watching the video. It really does mean a lot to me. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night. Whatever time it may be in your part of the world, Mr. John Wayne, signing off.